In the last two lectures, we've seen a total of three different ways to use this h function here. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a deep dive into it and talk about how it works. So far we've seen three different ways to use it. The first one we were doing h and passing in this dot slots dot default, and that was working just fine. We then made a refactor and passed in div. You can see here we're passing in div tag, and then we're passing in slots. And then we made another change up here. We're using h again, passing in a div, and this time we have an object of properties. So let's go ahead and see the different ways you can use h and why we might use h and what it does. So just a bit of a historical context, h is short for something like hyperscript. And basically a hyperscript function, uh, the hyper comes from HTML and the script comes from JavaScript. So it's a JavaScript function for creating HTML. This is very similar to what you see in React where it uses JSX. So let's have a look on the right hand side here. We have the actual Vue.js 3 source code, and this is the h file, which is where all the h definitions and the actual implementation are defined. You can see here it says h is the more friendly version of create vnode. And vnode is basically a virtual node, which is what you, Vue uses in its virtual DOM tree to keep track of all the nodes and all the different changes. We can see there's a number of ways of using h. The first one we have here is just with a div. And then we have an example with a div and then some props. And then we have an example with a whole bunch of different things, for example, an actual component and passing in an array of children. If we continue scrolling down, we can see there's many different implementations for H or many different overloads. And if we scroll right down to the bottom, we can see the actual implementation is here. And it's actually not too difficult. It just does different things depending on the number of arguments. For example, if there's two arguments, it's going to do something different to if there is just one. Let's see some examples of how this actually works. So let's say you have a div. What Vue is going to do is compile this into something like h of div. So the first argument is going to be the tag in this particular case. If you have a class or some other properties, it's going to include those two. So let's say you had a class of foo with your div. What this would do is compile into something like this. We're going to have h of div. The second argument is going to be all the options or properties. So this one will have a class of let's say foo, and that would work just fine. The third thing you can have is going to be obviously the same thing with the class, but we can actually have some children as well. So let's say I had a little old span here. What this is going to do is compile into something like this. We're going to have div for our first argument. The second argument is going to be the class of bar. And the third argument is going to be the children. So that's going to be an array often. And inside of here, we can have another h function. In this case, it would just be span. And this can go on forever and ever. Instead of passing in a div, which is just, or an element, which is going to be a string, you can actually pass in a component as well, which we're going to see very soon. Anyway, that's basically how H works. You have all these different overloads, and the whole point of H is basically an intermediate step between compiling your templates into a virtual DOM tree. H is very convenient for certain things, which we're going to see over the next few lectures, but basically we just have to remember that H is what you end up with after you've compiled your view templates.